Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using three moments method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam on time. In this beam, we are having two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, we are having a point load acting on the center. In the span BC, we are having uniformly distributed load acting for the full span. Span AB is 10 meter long. Span BC is 8 meter long. There are three supports in this beam. In the point A, in the point B and in the point C, there are supports. All the supports are roller supports. Now let us make the ordinates. For making the ordinates, we have to assume each span as a separate simply supported beam. First, let us take the span AB and assume that it is simply supported. In a simply supported beam, if the point load is acting on the center, the maximum bending moment occurs on the center. The formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL by 4. Here, W is 72, L is 10. We can apply in the formula. Finally, we are getting 190. Now, let us consider the span BC. In the span BC, UDL is acting for the full span. Here also, the maximum bending moment occurs in the center. The formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL square by 8. Here, W is 36, L is 8. We can apply in the formula. Finally, we are getting 288. If the point load is acting, the bending moment diagram will be in the shape of a triangle. If UDL is acting, the bending moment diagram will be in the shape of a parabola. Now, let us apply the theorem of three moments in the span AB and in the span BC. In the previous video, we have derived the three moments equation. Here, we have to calculate the area 1 and area 2. The area 1 for the triangle and area 2 for the parabola. Now, let's see the formulas to calculate the areas. If a triangle is having breadth B and height H, the area formula is half into breadth into height. This is a parabola. This parabola is made by the second degree curve. The area formula is 2 by 3 into breadth into height. Now let us calculate the areas. For this triangle, the breadth is 10 meter, the height is 180. We can apply. Finally, we are getting 900. For this parabola, breadth is 8 meter, the height is 288. We can apply. Finally, we are getting 1536. Now, let us calculate the centroids. When we calculate the centroid, we must be very careful. For the first diagram, the centroid distance should be calculated on the left side. For the second diagram, the centroid distance should be calculated on the right side. That is why in the formula it is mentioned x bar left and x bar right. Here we are having symmetrical diagrams. Both of the diagrams are symmetrical. The centroid lies in the center for both of them. The distance from the centroid to the left is 10 by 2. In the parabola, the distance between the centroid to the right side is 8 by 2. So, x bar left we are getting 5 meter. For x bar right, we are getting 4 meter. In this equation, we can apply all the values. Here, we are having one advantage. In the point A and in the point C, there will be no movements because they are simply supported ends. So, MA is equal to MC is equal to 0. 
Now let us apply these values in this equation. Here L1 is 10 meter and L2 is 8 meter. We can apply them. 10 plus 8, 18. 18 into 2, we will get 36. Here, when we calculate, we are getting minus 2700. Here, we are getting minus 4608. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 7308. Finally, we are getting MB, which is equal to minus 203 kN meter. We can analyze this beam alternatively using the formulas. If in the exam you are given the table of formulas or you can memorize the formulas, this method is very easier. In most of the problems in the exam, the point loads and the UDLs are coming. So it is very useful to memorize these formulas. In the first span, we are having a point load. In this span, we have to find 6a x bar left upon L. So, we have to select this formula. In the second span BC, we are having UDL. And we have to find 6a x bar right upon L. So, we have to choose this formula. In the formula, let's apply the values. In the span AB, A is equal to 5 meter, W is equal to 72 kN, the length is 10 meter. We can apply all of the values. After the calculation, we are getting 2700. In the second span BC, W is 36, length is 8 meter. After applying in the formula, we are getting 4608. Now, let us apply the values inside the three moments equation. Finally, we are getting MB is equal to minus 203 kN meter. Now, let us calculate the reactions. In this beam, we are having two spans span AB and span BC. So, we have to split the beam into two parts for span AB and for span BC. In the span AB, the moment MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. For the span BC, the moment will be acting in the anticlockwise direction. First, let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions. In this span, first I am going to calculate the reaction Ra. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The reaction Ra is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 10 meter. So 10 Ra. The point load is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative and the distance is 5 meter, so minus 72 into 5. The moment is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. Finally, we are getting Ra is equal to 15.7 kN. To find out Rb1, let us apply the rule. Summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. We are having 3 vertical forces. Ra and Rb1 are acting upwards. So, they will be positive. The point load 72 kN is acting downwards. So, it will be negative. Ra we have already calculated. We can apply that. After calculation, we are getting Rb1 is equal to 56.3 kN. Now, let us take the span BC and find out the reactions. In this span, first let us calculate Rb2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. The vertical reaction Rb2 
is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it is positive and the distance is 8 meter. So 8 or B2. The UDL is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply the load with the distance and half distance. The distance is 8 meter, half distance is 8 by 2. The movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. Finally, we are getting RB2. Now let us calculate RC. For that, let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. In this span, we are having three vertical forces RB2, RC, and UDL. RB2 and RC are acting upwards, so they will be positive. The UDL is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance to get the total load. RB2 we have already calculated, we can apply that. Finally, we are getting RC. We have calculated the reaction in the point B two times. So, we have to add them. After adding, we are getting RB which is equal to 225.675 kN. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before drawing shear force diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am calculating the shear force values from the point A to the point C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. The upward forces will be positive. The downward forces will be negative. You can see the calculations here. For the point loads, we have to calculate the shear force at just left of the point and just right of the point. Now you can see the shear force diagram. If there is UDL, the shear force line will be inclined. You can see that in the span BC we are having UDL. That is why we are getting inclined line. For the point loads, it will be a straight line. In the shear force diagram, if you are getting negative values, we have to draw below this line. If you are getting positive values, we have to draw above the line and then mark positive and negative. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. Before drawing bending moment diagram, let us make the free moment diagram and end moment diagram. The free moment diagram is made using the loads in the beam. The end moment diagram is made using the end moments we have calculated. For the free moment diagram, we have to consider each span as a separate assembly supported beam. We know that for a assembly supported beam, if the point load is acting on the center, the formula for maximum bending moment is WL by 4. We are getting 180. If UDL is acting, the formula for maximum bending moment is WL square by 8. We are getting 288. If the free movement diagram comes above the line, that will be positive. Right now, both of the diagrams are coming above the line, so they are positive. In rare cases, it may come downside when there are coupled moments. Now, let us make the end movement diagram. In the point A and in the point C, the movement is zero. We already saw that. In the point B, we are having a movement 203. If the end movement diagram is having negative value, we have to draw it above the line. If it is having positive value, we have to draw below the line. In this case, we got a negative value. So we draw above the line and mark as negative. Now let us draw the bending moment diagram. For that we have to combine the free moment diagram and end moment diagram. After combining wherever they are acting alone without mingling, we have to mark them. Here we are having the free moment diagram alone. So we are marking as positive. Here end moment diagram so negative. Here, free movement diagram, so positive. 
then we have to mark the values also wherever the free movement diagram and the end movement diagram are acting together we are not marking anything we just keep the space empty if you are very experienced no need to draw the free movement diagram and end movement diagram we can directly draw the bending movement diagram we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video